Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT official study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. It's 2020 edition. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number. 1131. Let's begin, shall we? 1131, the very last problem on that page, number 25. We already did number 23 and 24 in the previous video. Today we'll start with number 25. In number 25, we are given a picture, a picture of a silo. A silo is something that you construct to store grain and stuff like that. Farmers have it in the rural areas, and it uh, and then the picture looks something like this. Now you understand this is essentially a cylinder, and then on top of the cylinder we have a picture that looks something like this. It's a cone, as you can see, it's a cone, and it has a height of it has a height of five feet. The cylinder itself is 10 feet. And then we have another cone here, identical. These two cones are identical. The question simply is, what's the volume of this silo? Let's find out, shall we? To find the volume of the silo, we'll have to do it in two parts. First, we'll figure out the volume of the cylinder, right circular cylinder. Then we'll figure out the volume of one cone. Once we have the volume of one cone, we'll just multiply by two to get the volume of two cones and add them up. And that's all it is. So, question is what's the volume of the silo? So, first, the volume of the right circular cylinder. So this volume is simply pi r squared times h. How much stuff you can put in a, in a cylinder, how much stuff you can put in a cylinder depends on two things. It depends on two things. It depends on how wide open it is on the top, which is the area of the circle on the top. And second thing, it depends on how deep it is, which is the height. So the volume of the circle, uh, sorry, the area of the circle on the top, which is pi r squared times how deep it is, the height. Let's find out, shall we? Height we know is 10 feet pi r squared and r squared we are also further told, I left it out we are told that the radius here from here to here is 5 feet so we, so we are ready r squared r is 5 so it's 5 squared times the height which is 10 25 times 10 is 250 so it's 250 pi. That part is simple and straightforward, it is done. Now we have to do plus the volume of the two identical cones. And the volume of a cone is something like this. One third pi r squared h. It's the exact same as that, but a cone is one third of the volume of a cylinder. Let's call this h1 so we don't get confused. The height one, which is this height right here, we're calling it the height h1. And let's call this the height 2, which is 5 feet. So, one third times pi pi, which is just, we're going to write as pi right now, r squared, again, it's the same thing, 5 squared, but this time the height, h2, the height, h2, is only 5 feet. So, 25, 25 times 5 is 75, and that is not what I have in my notes, 25 times 5 is not 75, it is 125, 125, over 3 pi. 125 over 3 pi. Let's divide. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 
125 over 3. We're going to divide top and bottom by 3 here. 12 has 4 trees. 12 has 4 trees. And this 5 here, that you, this 5 that you see here, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to do it in a different color so you can see it. I'm going to pretend that that 5 is a 6. In other words, I'm just approximating it so that we don't have to waste time. And 6 has, 6 has 2 trees. In other words, it is approximately 42 pi. Approximately because we changed that 5 into, into a 6. And we have two of those. We have two of those. So now we can add them all up. Let's do it here. We don't need this thing anymore. So we have 250 pi here. And we have 42 here. 42 times 2 is 84. We have to have, <coughs> we have, to have two of them. We have to have two. It's 84 pi. Can you stay with me the story as we speak? 84 pi. So we end up with 4. 5 plus 8 is 13. 334 pi. 334 pi. I'm going to pretend now. I'm going to pretend that. I'm going to pretend that pi is equal to 3. Of course, in reality, this will be 334. Of course, in reality, it is 3.1416, on and on and on, forever and ever. It never ends. It is an irrational number. I'm going to pretend it's 3. So pay, pay attention here where I'm going with this thing. As you can clearly see that even, even 333 times 3 would have been 1000. I know it's 999, so it would have been 1000. Therefore, you can clearly see that 334 times 3 is more than 1000. The answer, whatever it is, is clearly more than 1000. Especially given the fact that this 3 is not 3, it's more than 3. It's, 3 point, it's something more than 3. It's 3.1416. So something more than 3, something more than 3 times 334 will give us something more than 1000. There is only one answer to eyes that is something more than 1000 here. Answer clearly is not C because C is only 900. The answer is D. The answer is 1050. Let's move on, shall we? Number 26. It is very important that you always have the book in front of you, which is why I show the book in every video. You must purchase this book if you do not have it. And it's very important that you have the book. It's imperative. It's crucial. It is absolutely essential that you have the book always in front of you. That way you can learn how to take liberties. As you can see, I take liberties. I take liberties when I read the problem. I don't read it exactly the way it is written. I read it the way I, I want to read it. And similarly, when I look at the answer choices, I don't read the answer choices as they are written. I read them as it pleases me. Do you understand? You can only learn to take liberties if you actually have the actual thing in front of you so you can appreciate the difference between the two. Number 26. It says the line passes through. passes through 2k and k32. We also told that it also goes through the origin. Question simply is given the fact that it goes through these three points, the origin, this point and that point, which simply is what's the slope. That's fine. Slope is simply the change in y over the change in x. So first we'll use 2, 2k and 0, 0, right here, these two points. I don't know why I put the parents around the whole thing, but you get the idea. k minus 0, change in y, k minus 0 is just k, 2 minus 0 is just 2. And now we do the other points. It goes through k32 and 0, 0. Again, the change in y is 32 minus 0, which is just 32. And k minus 0, which is just k. You see? And we just solve this simple equation for k. k times k is k squared. 
and 2 times 30, 32 is 64. Therefore, the k has to be either positive 8 or negative 8. And again, as, you, as I just told you a little while ago, I don't read the problem exactly. It is written the way it is written in front of you here, because I'm lazy. What it actually says in the problem is that which of the following, which of the following could be the value of k? Could be. It doesn't say which of the follow, following is the value of k, because value of k could be this one or the positive eight or negative eight. And since since negative eight is not one of the alpha choices, which is just as well, because otherwise we'll end up, otherwise we would have ended up with two right answers. Answer here is eight. Number 27. Number 27 requires some writing, so let me finish writing it. It says we have a rectangle. We have a rectangle which we are going to alter. A rectangle, we are told, was altered. It was altered in such a way that its length, its length went up by 10%. Its length went, went up by 10% and its width went down by 3%. You can pretty well guess by now as to what it is that we have to find. We are told that as a result, as a result of these two alterations, the fact that we increase its length by the fact that we increase the length by 10% and we reduce the width by p percent, as a result, what we ended up is a new rectangle, a new rectangle. We, as a result, we ended up with a new rectangle, a rectangle whose area has gone down by. 12%. The question simply is, in order for that to be true, what must be the value of p? Now if you like, as a matter of fact, not only not that if you like, I think it's a good idea that you pause this video. I keep I always forget to tell you this thing, you should make a habit of it. When I finish writing the problem on the blackboard, pause the video and do it yourself first if you have not done these problems ahead of time. But better yet, before watching the watching the video. Do the exams ahead of time yourself so that you have some sense of what's going on so that you'll, you'll get more out of it. So if you've not done so, pause the video and do the problem. I'll give you two seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Alright, enough of that. So what are we going to do? Well, here are the answer choices. We're going to do the problem first. We're going to do the problem first in the most most untraditional manner. Most untraditional manner. Let's make up a rectangle first. Here is our length. Let's pretend that the length is 1000. And here is our width. Let's pretend it is 100. And what I mean by we're going to do it in the most untraditional manner is that we're going to cheat. Yes, you heard me right. We're going to cheat. We're going to look at the answer choices. Answer choices are 12. 15, 20, and 22. 15, 20, and 22. There are four answer choices here. So the thing to do here is to pick one, pick one answer choice. Answer has to be one of these four bloody answers. So we're going to pick one number, put it back in the problem, and see where it goes. Do you understand? Now, before, before we go anywhere, let's do one more thing here. Let's pretend that the answer choices were, pretend, let's pretend that the answer choices were 17, 22, and let's say 27. Let's say these four were the answer choices. Okay, let's stay with me in the, in the story. Now when I say pick one of these four answer choices, it does not actually mean pick one of these four answer choices. It would only mean exactly what I said if you were a puppet. And if you are not a bloody puppet, then learn to be creative. Learn to listen to, listen to what is being said in a creative manner. So, for example, if these were the answer choices, and if, if I, uh, I know that one of, the four, one of these four has to be the right answer, I would pick one and try it out. But which one? Well, I'm going to try out 20. Even though the 20 is not even there. It's not even there because it's a nice number to work with. I don't want to do the bloody calculation of 17% or 20% or 27%. It's annoying. I'm going to try out 20 
and that will tell me whether it is too large or too small. If it turned out that the 20 was too large, then we already know the 22 and 27 are not the answers. And it is at that point that you pick either this one or this one exact exact number and see what happens. Do you understand? Or even then you can try out 15% next and see what happens. If you try 15% turns out 15 is wrong, too large, that one is gone and the answer is this, we're done. Do you understand? Let's do that. I erased everything, I keep erasing it. So the answer choices were 12, 15, 20 and 22. 12, 15, 20 and 22. Let's try out 15. Let's try out 15. Okay, watch what happens. So we're going to pretend that the P is 15. In other words, we're going to pretend that the width was reduced by 15%. We're going to pretend that the width was reduced by 15%. So if the width was reduced by 15%, this is the length, the length is increased by 10%. So if you increase 1000 by 10%, that's just 1100, which is why we pick some nice round number. 10% of 1000 is just 100, so it's just 1100. If you reduce this by 15%, 15% of 100 is 15, it becomes 85. And that's your new, that's your new rectangle. And let's see what happens now. So here's the, I don't know what is wrong with my handwriting. Here is the new area, and here is the old area. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let me let me let me start from here. Here is the new area, and we are told that if you if you do that, if you increase the length by 11 percent, or rather 10 percent, and reduce the width by 15 percent, what happens? We are told that as a result the area goes down by 12%. If the area goes down by 12%, which means the area of this guy, this area right here, must be 88% of the old, old guy, old rectangle. So this has to equal to 88% of the old area. Because we told that the area went down by 12%. As a result, the area went down by 12%, which means whatever the old area was, if you subtract 12% from it, you're left with 88%. 88% of all must equal this. 88%. 88% of means times old area, which was simply 1000 times 100. Now, if this agrees, if it works, we're done. That's the answer. If it doesn't agree, we'll see what happens. So let's, let's start then. First thing I notice is that here we have a hundred, here we have a hundred. Now I'm going to change the colors so that it's easier for you to see. I see two zeros here, I see two zeros here, and I see two zeros here. Let's get rid of those. Divide, in other words, divide both sides by, let's divide both sides by hundred. I'm going to further divide, and this, this since this is getting too messy for you, I'm going to actually re rewrite it. If I were doing it myself, I wouldn't have rewritten it, I would have just continued here. But let's just read like this. Here we have 11 times 85. Here we have 88 times 10. 88 times 10. Let's divide both sides by 11. 11 goes away and 80. As you can clearly see, here we have only 80. Here we have 85. 8 times 10 is 80. This is 85. What does it tell us? This tells us that this new area is too large. New area is too much. It's too much. So we pretended that we reduce the length by 15%. The new rectangle has to be even tinier, it has to shrink. Because this is too much, this is 85, this is 80. Let's try 20. Let's try 20. Oh, that's not. So this, is, this doesn't change. This doesn't change. This is the level. It goes to 1100. And if we try 20%, if we pretend that P is 20, if we pretend that P is 20, then this is going to become 80. If you reduce by 20%, it becomes 80. So now new area is 80 times 1100. 88% of the old area, which is 1000 times 100. Again, watch what happens. 100 goes away. Divide both sides by 100 one more time. These two zeros go away. Divide both sides by divide both sides by 11 one more time. 
becomes there you go what do you know 8 times 10 is 80 20 is the answer now I'm going to tell you something else which is the answer choices were answer choices were 12, 15, 20 and 22 12, 15, 20 and 22 if I were doing the problem myself from scratch having, having not seen it before at all in my life if this problem were presented to me and if I were doing it myself I actually would have started with 20 I would not have started with 15 because I think 15 is ugly why, why do 15 when I have a nice number of 20 or 10 or 30 some nice round number of 20 the reason that I did not start with 20 is because I knew that the correct answer is 20 had I started with 20 you would say well this guy already knew the answer which is why he's trying the right answer so for your benefit I started with 15 just to amuse you do you understand? we are done with this problem Are we done with this problem? Yes and no. We are done with this problem. As far as as far as the problem is concerned, as far as the problem is concerned for the exam, but if you insist, if you insist, we're going to redo it in a more traditional manner. Let's do it in a more traditional manner. So here is our rectangle again, we're still going to use 1000 and 100. And we are told that we are going to increase the length by 10%, so 10% becomes 1100. Why do, why do these numbers appear, 1000 and 100, where do they come from? They, well, they just fell from the sky, we just made them up. So if you increase 1000 by 10%, that's 1100, that part is still the same as before in this story also. 100, we are going to reduce it by P percent. If you reduce it by P percent, it's going to become 100 times 1 minus P over 100. In other words, in other words, if it turns out, if it turns out that P is 10, if it turns out that the correct answer is 10 percent, 10 over 100 is 0 0.1, 1 minus 0 0.1 would be 0 0.9, would be 0 0.9, and you can see it, if you reduce it by 10 percent, it's 0 0.9 times 100. That's where it comes from, 1 minus P over 100. In other words, we're going to set it up in a traditional manner, instead of looking at the answer choices. And we're just going to solve it. Now it's just pretty straightforward. So here's our new area, which is simply 1100 times 100 times 1 minus p over 100, which we can write it. We can write as 100 minus p over 100. I hope, and of course times 100. Stay with me, otherwise you're going to get confused. So instead of writing. 1 minus p over 100, I'm going to write that as 100 minus p over 100 to save ourselves a step. 100 minus p over 100. So that part is that part is done. And that has to equal, we are told that that has to equal 88% of the all area. Now, they do not tell us that, that it is equal to 88% of the whole area. What we are told is that the area has gone down by 12%. Well, if area has gone down by 12%, the whole area has been reduced to 88%. And that has to be equal to each other. 88% of all area, which was 1000 times 100. So if you are ready, we can start. You see, I see 100 here, I see 100 here, let's divide up and divide by 100, or rather cancel out 100. Similarly here, I see 100 here, 100 here, that goes away. I'm going to rewrite, instead of continuing it, I'm going to rewrite it for, so that it's easier to, for you to follow. Again, had I been doing it myself, I would have continued here until, until the very end. But let me rewrite it. 1100, this 1100 right here, times 100 minus P which is this guy right here, 100 minus P is equal to this 88 times 1000. Okay, now, see what I was going to do earlier, and I'm, now I'm going to do it, what I was going to do earlier, which is 
divide both sides by 100. If we divide both sides by 100, these two zeros are going to cancel out, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Divide both sides by 100, and these two zeros are going to cancel out. I see 11, I see 88. Let's divide both sides by 11. If let's do it in a different color so you can, we don't get confused. Let's divide both sides by 11, so 88 is going to become 8. And what we're left with here is 100 minus C equals 8, 8 times 10, which is just 80. Bring the P to the other side, bring 80 to the other side, and P goes to the other side, so P will become 100 minus 80, which is 20. Voila. Question was, what's the value of P? The answer is, the P is equal to 20. The width must have been reduced by 20%. We'll stop right here. We'll stop right here. I don't feel like going anymore. I'll see you tomorrow and we're going to pick up from where we left off and finish up the multiple choice questions there 28, 29 and 30 in the next video and in the following video we'll begin the gradient question. In the meantime, if you wish, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like me to help you prepare for the exam, I can help you with the math portion, the grammar portion, which is the writing part. I can help you with the vocabulary, which will help you in the reading portion. You can get hold of me by sending me an email. Just visit my website, Keshwani Prep, KeshwaniPrep.com. Send me an email and we'll talk. Alright, bye now.